Do you have no idea how to raise money from investors? That's what I'm going to explain to you in today's video. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button to get more great videos on how to overcome the challenges of being a startup CEO. I've raised over $100 million in venture capital and private equity funding for the companies I've been involved with, and I've helped countless startup CEOs like you raise hundreds of millions of dollars too with the tips I'm going to share with you today. So let's get started. So the first step in the process is, are you ready to raise money yet? And to raise money, there are a few things that you need. The first is you need a plan and a strategy to go forward. Because if you don't have a plan and you don't have a pitch deck to go along with your plan, then how are you gonna present yourself to potential investors? That's gonna be your first challenge. So you need to figure that one out first. Next, you're gonna need a team to be able to raise money. It's very difficult, even if you're a solo founder, which many of you might be, to raise money without saying, who are the people that are gonna join me in this venture coming later? So in other words, you have to have some plan of who you're gonna hire and when you're gonna hire these people. If you have co-founders, you need to present them. You need to have a team, you need to have a thought process along with all your other plans. This is really important because investors wanna know how you're gonna build your company. So this is the next important step that you need to have down. Next, you need to know how much money you want to raise. I don't really like ranges of money. When you see somebody say, let's say you're very early stage and you're raising seed money and you say, no, I wanna raise $100,000 to $400,000. I don't like that. Personally, it's your company, you should know how much money you wanna raise. So if you wanna raise $200,000, say I wanna raise $200,000. Be clear about what you wanna do. Now, how do you determine this? Well, ideally, your money should last you for the next 24 months at least until you make the next major milestone that your company is on. So you wanna kind of figure this out and back into how much money you need to get to that point in time. That's gonna be important for you. Now that's gonna determine where your investors are gonna come from as well, because all these things determine the next steps for you in terms of what you do. So these are the pre-steps that we need to get right in order to be able to raise our funding. So we can't just say, I'm gonna raise money, got to have these first steps done right. Now, since we're talking about first steps being done right, we also need to be investable. Now, not all companies are investable. Now, what do I mean by this? Is you have to understand who your source of funding is going to be. So for example, if you're saying, I need to raise venture capital, your company, more likely than not, may not be right for venture capitalists. So we need to understand, based on the type of company we have, how much money we need, where we're located geographically, where we're gonna raise our money from. So that's one of the other steps that we need to understand is, are we investable? Who's gonna invest in us? Because if we have a company that is gonna grow slowly, then probably in all likelihood, it's not gonna be right for venture capitalists. It's not gonna be right for angel investors. It may be right for friends and family, maybe right for a loan of some sort, a small business loan, but it's not gonna be right for venture. So we need to understand if we fit the models that we're trying to go after. So now we've completed the first step in our process. Now, please hit the like button if you like the information that you're getting right now and you think it's useful to you. The second step in our process is identifying which investors are right for us. Is it friends and family? Is it angel investors? Is it venture capitalists? Or is it something else? So let's go through each of these. So if we're very early on, most likely where's the funding gonna come from? It's gonna come from friends and family. It may come from our own bank account. Maybe it comes from our parents but it's gonna come from people close to us in all likelihood because we haven't proven anything yet. And in today's world, even with angel investors to get our company off the ground, we've gotta prove things first. So we have to take whatever funds we can muster, whether it's $5,000, $10,000, $50,000, $100,000, and get started 
that way and achieve whatever we can on that small amount of funding to get to the next step so that we can get to angel investors or venture capitalists. Now, there are exceptions to these rules. Now, the exception is when you're getting started and you say, I need to raise venture money. Typically, for people like this, it's going to be people who have a track record of success of some sort. That's what I did because I had a track record of success, so I was able to raise money that way. Also, it was a little bit different time than in today's world where it's really skewed and venture capitalists are stepping back from early stage funding in many cases. So that's one way to do it. I've also worked with other entrepreneurs who've raised money because they've had a good track record of success previously. So they were able to get people to back them because they were a good bet. Now, if you don't have those things, if you don't have those characteristics, friends and family, which means your money, your parents' money, your friends' money, that's likely how you're going to start. Now let's move to the next one on the list, angel investors. Now, typically angels are gonna get involved right at that next stage after friends and family. So they're gonna be, if you really don't have a huge amount of traction, depending upon the type of angel, that's gonna be your person. They're gonna invest at this point. They're gonna be the people that are gonna be willing to invest at this point in time, are gonna be the angel investors because you don't have a huge amount of traction, you probably haven't proved an MVP yet or whatever. If you're very early on in the stages beyond the friends and family stage, that's the next stage is gonna be the angel investors where you're just trying to get the thing beyond maybe first article, first product to getting a little bit of traction, maybe even more traction, depending upon where you are in the process, that can be the angels. Angels typically in today's world, they're going to be giving you those hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe to a million, two million dollars, maybe even three million dollars, maybe even more than that. But they're going to be in those small ranges of funding. That's going to be angel investors. Venture capitalists, they're going to get involved when you're trying to scale, when your revenue suddenly, when you've, ach when you've achieved traction in your business. In other words, you have revenue. Revenue is probably at least a million dollars a year or beyond, depending upon the company. You've got multiple customers. It's clear you're on your way. That's in today's world when VCs get involved. So those are our three groups. Now, what are the other things we have to look at? Well, we also have to look at geographic concerns. In other words, where are we? So if we're sitting here like I am in California, well, I'm fortunate because I've got Silicon Valley. I can go raise money from Silicon Valley investors. But if let's say you're in New Jersey, is it likely that you're gonna get the Silicon Valley investors to invest? Maybe, but more likely people in New Jersey is gonna be where you're gonna look first. Look geographically first. You wanna look by size, the money amounts that you need. And then there's a third thing that we're gonna look for. We're gonna look for people who have a fit with us. Now, what does this mean? So let's say I'm building a life science business. What am I looking for? I'm looking for investors that are familiar with life sciences businesses, even angel investors who are familiar with life science businesses, angels, VCs, because not all investors are the same. So I want these people who have familiarity, who have understanding of what I'm trying to do. That's my tribe because they're going to understand it. And many of these people want to give back. Now, what are the characteristics that they're looking for? Let's go through that as well. Let's see if we fit. And we're talking early stage angel investors, they're looking for ideally maybe a hundred X return on their money. That's what they're hoping that you can be that one in 100 company that gives them that. So let's say, you know, I invest a hundred thousand dollars. They're going to want a hundred times that hundred thousand dollar investment back. Now, how long are they looking for? Probably seven to 10 years at least. It's not like you have to return the money tomorrow and it's a risk investment. Now, if it's venture capitalists, they're looking for probably, 10x if they're early stage VCs. If they're later stage VCs, three to four X. That gives you an idea of the range that you're looking for depending upon where you're at in the process. So these are the different constraints that you have to look at as you go through the process. That's step two. Now let's talk about step three. How do we contact investors? So there are various ways to do this. Now I'm gonna go from least successful to 
most successful. Now, you can do cold emails. It works. Now, how do we do this? Well, first we research. We go online and we research our targets. We find people that we think are gonna be good targets for us in terms of the types of investments we're trying to make. I did this, I was able to get meetings doing this. You can too, but do the research first because in my case, because I was building a semiconductor company, I was looking for investors that had experience in that area. Look for the same thing in your area. Look for people that are close to you in proximity. Then what should your message be? Well, you wanna be short and to the point. Don't try and oversell the deal in the email that you're gonna to send to this person. You know, have a nice quick title line, say potential X investment. In other words, an investment in this area. So if it's a life science investment, I would say potential life science investment, something like that. And then the email should be short and to the point like mine was. Mine was something like this, dear investor, my name, you wanna introduce yourself. My name is Brett Fox, I'm CEO of this company, whatever your company is. Uh, and you can say something positive about them. If you can, if you know something about the investor, say it, you know, I'm, I'm aware of your great work in X area or something like that, right to the point. And then you can say, you know, I'm the CEO of this company and uh, you know, here's what's special about us. In my case, I was very quick and to the point to say the type of company we were building, analog semiconductor company. And I told them the two closest things to think about the two best public competitors linear technology and maximum integrated products, you know, which is where the whole team came from with both of those companies. So I said that, and then I mentioned how much experience that we had in there, as you can see in the, in, in the, um, in the email, uh, that was the way to do it. So it was one right to the point, you know, one, two, three, right to the point. That's what you need to do. Don't oversell. Don't oversell an email, just get right to the point. That's what a good cold email does, but make sure you're targeting the right people. Next example can be LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn has a wonderful setup where you can direct message people on LinkedIn. Again, do the same kind of research. If they are people that you don't know, what I like to do with LinkedIn, let me just take a step back here. What I like to do with LinkedIn, uh, and I found this worked for me as I would research, I find people that I knew who knew somebody. So in other words, second contacts to me and I'd find out, well, Bob knows this person or Mary knows this person. Great, then I would say to Mary, I'd say, hey Mary, would you mind introducing me to uh, Investor X? That worked really well. So that was a way to use LinkedIn. You can also use, as I was saying earlier, you can use their direct messaging feature for people you don't know and use the exact same cold email template that I talked about, same way, you know, because you don't know these people, they don't know you. Uh, you want to be direct right to the point of what it is that you're trying to do. And you will get responses again doing this. So LinkedIn is another good source to find people. And if you can find people that are contacts, great, use them. Okay, now our third option, warm introductions. This is always going to be the best. And you're going to be amazed at how many people you know that know people. And I'm going to tell you the final technique to do in just a second here, but you know people, whether you know it or not, that know people. And use those people to give you introductions to the people that you want to meet, be it friends and family. Hey mom, can I talk to Uncle Herb or whatever? Because uh, I know he's wealthy and, you know, would you mind, uh, you know, setting up a meeting for me with Uncle Herb? You can do something like that. Or if, if you know somebody who knows an angel investor, you can do the same thing. Ask that person to set up the meeting for you. Be amazed at how many people you know. Do the same thing with venture capitalists as well. Keep doing that. That's how you'll get the best meetings. That's how I was able to get both of my investors, my original investors, which using that exact technique was, I would say to people that I knew, would you mind introducing me? And they said, sure. In one case, he said, just use my name. And I, in, in this case, the guy's name was Lou. I, I wrote Gil, who turned out to be one of our investors. Uh, Lou recommended I speak to you. Next thing I know, his admin was in contact with me and we were meeting. And then the next thing that happened was he invested in my company. Same thing happened with our other investor as well. Same thing, one of my co-founders knew the investor and that was how we ended up meeting. So you'll be amazed at how many people you know. 
And this gets to my final point. Let's say your network is nowhere. And I know there's some of you out there saying, yeah, that's great, but I don't have a great network like you did, Brett. Well, when I started, I didn't have a network either. But here's a technique that I did. Every single person that I knew, every single one, I would do this. I would ask them, be it an engineer, be it a potential investor, be it whomever, do you know somebody who might be interested in investing in my company or helping us or whatever? And that would lead to sometimes no, there's no doubt about it. Some people say, no, I don't know anybody. But many times people would say to me, yeah, I think I know this person. You, you should contact him or her. And I'd contact them and do the same thing again and again and again. Network, network, network. Don't stop. Just keep doing it. And your network will expand exponentially by doing this. So if you use all these techniques, the cold emails, the LinkedIn, the warm introductions, and the networking and the relentless networking, even with people who turn you down. Quick story. So how did I find Gil? Well, there was another investor who turned me down and had the night and was nice enough to call me, which is very rare for a VC to call somebody. He called me and said, hey, we're not interested, but have you tried these guys? And I said, no, I haven't. But I think I know somebody who knows a partner over there. He says, that's great. You should contact them because I think they'll be interested. That's why you ask. So everybody that rejects you, everybody that tells you no, people like to help people. So if you're nice to people, many times you're gonna get a no, but you never know. Keep asking because sometimes, just like me, somebody's going to be nice enough to pick up the phone and call you, or you can ask them, do you know anybody? And they're going to say, yeah, you know what? Talk to these guys. Those are the tips that are going to help you. Keep doing them again and again and again and be relentless. Also, final thing, understand the numbers game you're playing here. Typical VC is for every face-to-face -face meeting that they take, and this pretty much holds true for angels as well, one in 100 people that they meet with face-to-face -face, are they going to invest in? One in 100. You got to play the numbers. If you think after getting five rejections you're screwed, you're not going to win at this game. You have to be relentless in what you do. That's what we did. 63 people turned us down. 63 no's before we got the final yes that we needed. That's the way you have to be. Just be relentless at this. That's how you win. Your, your pitch will get better. You'll keep networking. Your network will expand. Keep at it. Learn from the rejections. Understand why you're hearing no. Keep working at it. That's the way you get an investment. Now to help you with the investment process, I've created a free pitch deck template, which you can get by clicking the link to this video. You'll see the link below here in the comments column. You'll see it there and you'll see it in the description as well. And it has everything you need to create a great pitch for yourself. It's nicely done, it has all the slides in order, nicely sequenced, and in the comments column, uh, in below the below each slide it has nice comments on how you can create the slide and what's important about each slide so it gives you a nice run of what the slides are supposed to be and how to create a killer pitch deck for yourself all you need to do to get it for free is just click the link and it's yours for more great content as a startup ceo just subscribe and just keep watching and you're going to see more great videos that are going to help you in your journey as a startup ceo if you liked today's video, please comment below and hit the like button. I'm Brett at brettjfox.com. Have a great, great day. Thank you.